Hi, this is Greg Weatherall for the NME, uh, backstage here at All Points East Festival, and I'm joined by the new party. Hi, guys. Hey, what's up? Guys? You've obviously already played the set. How did it go? It's great. It's good. Yeah, it was a good yeah. one. Yeah. It was, uh, it, was, it was spicy and warm and good. It was fun. Is it a different sort of preparation that goes into these sort of earlier shows than you play this sort of early in the day? Is it harder to get into to the mindset? Drinking. Generally more stress. Yeah. I'm stressed out earlier <laughs> in the day. Oh really? Yeah. Is this, is, when's your worst period? Is it just sort of like half an hour or is it longer than that before a stage set when you go, okay, getting the picture three, getting ready for it? Like a half hour. Half hour? Yeah, maybe. Do you all Depends. witness that as well? I mean, or, or do you all share that a little bit? Um, We're not morning people. Yeah. Not morning people. Morning, we played at like, two in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we're not morning. <laughs> is, is there any sort of differences playing, have you noticed playing sort of British crowds to what it's like back home in the States? Well, besides you know, speaking a different language, yeah, we, we generally <laughs> get along with all of you guys. People are, seem to be equally as enthusiastic over here as they are in the US. So it's been fun. There's no sort of discernible differences in the way sort of the crowd behaves or responds or a certain tracks people, that People home. come and they leave, like, they come right when you start and they leave right when you leave. It's, it's they're there and then they're gone. What, here? People in America tend to, like, kind of hang about. You, you kind of have to, like, kick them out of the venues sometimes, but... <laughs> they, they linger a bit more. Do they? Yeah. I, I noticed uh, people here in the UK, they use their phones a lot less. Right, that's a positive. That's a good thing. Yeah, it doesn't feel like that to us necessarily, because we moan quite a lot, I think. A lot of music lovers moan about the, the, that sort of whole thing of people getting their phones out, recording every living moment, or right. documenting everything, which usually to a worse quality, actually, than using their eyes and their memory. Yeah. Right. When we played with Jack White, we, he locked all, everybody's phones in these little cases. Yeah. Did he? I wonder yeah. if Rack and Tours will do that. I don't know. He's, he's, Jack White's very anti-telephone. Yes. Yeah. I don't know how you could do that at a festival though. They'd have to start now, surely. They'd have to start now. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a big ask. What was it like with yeah. playing with Jack White? Uh, it was Outside. great. It's really cool. It was uh, definitely not the size of stage we were used to. Yeah. So it was, you know, trying to get up there every night and like do sound checks and stuff was way different, but it was amazing. We played very cool venues, theaters. It was nice. And what about because you, you've all you've all now based in New York? And yeah. I mean, there's there's a big huge connection with New York here and the the the, sort of the indie scene of the early noughties with Interpol, Strokes, and so forth. Yeah, yeah. The big sort of scene there. What has it changed? Influence as a city influenced your music at all? Do you think? I think no. I think the sound that we brought from North Carolina has remained true, organic, natural to a T. We brought it to upstate New York. And that's influenced us. We have goats, we have chickens, we have ducks. The agriculture influences our mind and body. But musically speaking, we still are very of the same nature. That's good. And there wasn't any sort of problems with everyone jumping on board and moving to New York. There was no... I think it was, so, it was easier than finding a new house in North yeah. Carolina. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> our, our best friend Brian did move to Brooklyn pretty shortly after we moved there. That helps, which helps you was, acclimatize. Yeah, which was, stragglers with that. which was really <laughs> nice. We couldn't go without you, Brian. Yeah. And what, what would you say makes, makes a, I know it's a general thing to ask, but what makes a good festival show? I mean, how is it different for you from playing your own gig? I mean, it's hard to say, because we, we've pretty much only played festivals kind of at this time of day, pretty early on in mm. the day, so. Um, I don't know, I guess just if people are actually moving about and excited about it, it kind of feels like one of our shows, but yeah. in like a smaller venue. But generally it's just pretty awesome to be a part of something like this with bands you look up to and enjoy quite a bit, so. I think it's cool to like have fans that might not come to the show. Uh, like they might have not heard of you and then they're at this festival and they happen to like walk by and they're into the music. And you gain a new fan that way, which is different than like other people by word of mouth when they come to the shows in London because they heard about us somehow. But I feel like we had like an early set so people were just walking through and happened to, to see us play. 
Does that give you a bit of a buzz, really, that idea of just having that appeal rather than, you know, word of mouth, friend recommendation saying, you know, come and see the nude party, they're really good, I think you'll like them. Having that very instant sort of a connection with people when you're on a stage here, like you say, and people are coming in early doors, wondering about, might not know you, and then they hear you and go, oh, actually, I like that. Does it... Yeah, it makes me think better about the set if people Does aren't it? moving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's also a big point of at least in my idea of what music festival is like you you know the bands you want to see but you kind of yeah. happenstance so you stumble into something that you didn't know about and it could be your especially being the first band of this festival to play i think you kind of only get like the walk through yeah. you know there's people there that definitely like perhaps are familiar with the uh, with our band but you get the people that weren't you get the people that showed up early to doors you get music fans yeah yeah the true heads yeah and um what's 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 sort of your next movements now what's what's the next plan where next step go to brussels tomorrow yeah going to brussels baby touring hard yep yeah hard in the paint we're gonna be we're gonna be in europe until the fourth yeah or we fly out of london on the fourth um and then we're playing a few more festivals this summer but i think the main game plan is to work on a new record we, is that going? I mean, it's on on your minds to write a new record. Does it come really hard to do that? Because you're constantly on the move and, and touring and going from city to city, country to country, continent to continent. It must be hard to find the time to actually sit down and, and work on yeah. new material. We're, we're in the planning phase right now. Uh, like end of January, I guess beginning of January. Yeah. No. Well, beginning of January is when you're hoping to sort of so knuckle like, down. Sit down and, and just like knock it out. Yeah. We, we yeah we we we're not going to be touring that much in the fall. Right. And um, I mean, we I think we have a lot of inspiration and ideas right now. So it's a matter of throwing them, throwing them in the pot and baking something. And There's a lot happens. of moving pieces. Yeah. Well, thank you That's very all. much. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. That's well, good insight. That is good insight. Thank you very much. It's the nude party. Thanks. Thanks thank you. Man.